everybody, welcome to the 83K Way podcast. Today we have Chris McDonald, uh, amazing guy. I met him years ago. Uh, he's from Eastside Long Beach, started uh, the Cigar Rolling Academy here, and he's been doing it for years and a plethora of other things. I'm sure you're going to be impressed. Tune in and let me know what you think. I think we might have to turn that off. It's getting pretty hot in here, but I'll see you guys later. Welcome, Chris, to the 83K Way podcast, man. I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, I know it was <laughs> a little last minute, and we just reconnected after I don't know how many years. You're one of the guys who, one of the few, I would say, in the LA community, and Black LA is real, real small. So <laughs> everybody knows somebody. <laughs> but um, you were one of the few when I was younger to even entertain some of the stuff that I was trying to get started uh, years ago, you know, with a few friends of mine. So I have a huge, you know, amount of respect for you for just hearing us out, you know, and saying like, yeah, I'll hear your pitch. Like, what do you guys got going? Go ahead and tell everybody kind of like who you are, what you do, where they can find you. Nice. My name is Chris McDonald. I am a serial entrepreneur. Um, you know, went through a bunch of business going through college. After college, kind of worked for at and I'm also a senior um, programmer working in app development. So I kind of do entrepreneur and um, app development simultaneously. So just recently, last couple of years, I've actually branched off and I'm a full-time entrepreneur now. Nice. And one of the biggest businesses that you have is? So the biggest business I have currently is the Cigar Roller Academy. Yes, yeah. I remember that. I think we met when you were just getting the academy started. Right. But you had your own cigar line. Correct. Right? It Correct. was it Amor Negro. Amor Negro cigars. Yeah, and go. the yeah. and the reason for the academy was simply because just the um, the markup of the cigars that I was getting from Nicaragua at the time. Oh. Right. So okay. I was paying a certain amount for the cigars. I knew what I should have been paying, but then I was paying a little bit extra. Okay. So I figured you know, if I learned to roll my own cigars, number one, it would cut costs down. Mm -hmm. Number two, it would branch off into an entirely new business because mm -hmm. everybody else wants to learn as well. We just never had the opportunity. Mm. So thus, the Cigar Roller Academy was born. That's sick. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's duplicatable. You, you, I'm sure you don't even have to be present for the for all the academies. So, I mean, that's a that's a really good long term strategy too. So that's, yeah, that's pretty dope. Prior man. to the pandemic hitting, we were in the process. I was in the process of um, I was trying to do like multiple cigar rollers academy at the same time. Okay, like, so like I, was a I was franchising. Yeah, yeah. So like I was in the franchise. process of actually. So there's an actual formal form that you have to go through. There's some market research and everything that you have to do. Mm -hmm. So I was in the process of franchising. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit, and then we kind of took a step back and kind of you know regrouped and see you know. Well, that still worked after the, um, you know, coming back. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Sitting that close together, rolling cigars, being face to face with somebody that maybe you're not vaccinated, maybe you are vaccinated. So mm -hmm. we're just trying to kind of um, assess where we are currently mm -hmm. in this current climate and then just going from there. Okay. So a lot of what we talk about in uh, the 83K way and what I've been starting with with folks is uh, finding out where you started on. You know, whether you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneur, it seems like you were able to leverage both your entrepreneurship. So working with AT&T and you leverage that W-2, mm -hmm. you know, to skyrocket you into this other vertical of entrepreneurship. So kind of where did you start or where did you see yourself uh, starting before you got to where you are now? <laughs> well, I've always all right. So a little bit about myself is I came from nothing. Like I come from the east side of Long Beach. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you're when you're. In that environment, you only think one way. Mm -hmm. You know, you see people in the nice cars, you see people, you know, you don't know how they got them, mm -hmm. but you see people in them. So my goal was to be successful. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how I was going to be successful, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I just had that burning desire to be successful. And with that gave me the um, the drive to, to, to go full force in everything I do, yeah. including that is uh, when I play ball, when I play sports, right? Mm -hmm. So me being, being that zealous in sports kind of got me to college. And then college is where I learned that you don't have to be, just be a ball player or you don't just have to be, you know, a lawyer to, to make a lot of money. You know what I mean? Okay. So I think that's where I actually learned. Well, I had the drive and I think I, that kind of learned where to 
hone that drive, mm -hmm. you know, to be specific to what to different silos of what you want to do in life. Right. And you don't have to just be one person or just or do one thing. Wow. So that I mean, that's way back in what you said, high school, college. And so from there, you know, where did everything go for you? When so, did you first get like, when was it like, so, hey, like, I'll tell I'm you my, first, my first business you know? in college. OK. Killed it. <laughs> Killed my first business. I killed it, but I got sued. So, it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so you, yeah. don't, you don't know nothing, right? Yeah, so yeah, my first yeah. business was Audio Demix. Okay. So what's Audio Demix, right? So the thing with me is, I am intelligent, but I I uh, retain information slowly. Mm, okay. You know what I mean? So when I read, I retain it slowly. So what Audio Demix was, it was essentially your textbooks, your audio textbooks, and I put a dope beat behind it, right? So and it was like a jazz, like a jazz hip hop. Yeah, beat. yeah. What so, year was this? Oh my God, this was in 98. Wow. So in that sense where when the beat drops, you know how you can remember a dance move? Mm -hmm. I can remember a specific part of what's going on, like say, if it's history or if it's, you know what I mean, for it's uh, chemistry, I remember a certain formula based on when the beat drops. Mm. So that's what Audio Demix was. It helped me study. I figured if it works for me, it worked work for everybody else. Wow. And it did. But keep in mind, you're still audio textbooks. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> But it killed though. Yeah. But that just lets me know, that let me know at the time that my concept is dope. You know what I mean? Because think about it, anything we do is just in our head first. Yeah. And, you know, and then you don't share it, depending on your circle, you're, you're afraid to share it to people like, oh, that's crazy. No one's going to believe that. Yeah. I was never that person. They always thought I was crazy anyway. So I just went for it <laughs> and it killed. Yeah. And, you know, do, you ever, do you ever get people asking you like, or telling you like, man, you're always up to something. Yeah. You're always up to something or into this or into that. Mm -hmm. That lets me know that I'm not in the right circle. Mm. I want to be with people that are always trying to do something. Yep. Everything I do, everything we do will succeed. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I quit. It doesn't mean you give up. It means you just try something else. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you always have to be into something to succeed. Something. Yeah. Something. So you and I, we are uh, both fathers. Yeah. And <laughs> yes. uh, we'll drink to that real quick. Yes. After fathers. <laughs> yeah. yes. mm. And I know that um I know that personally it's presented its own massive my Sarai is ten now. Massive challenges along the way. Um how has that affected or how do you see that affecting you? in the past as you've been on your journey of uh, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and, and all I that. Think, I think in the beginning, so my son's five years old, right? Mm -hmm. He's a small five. But I think in the, be <laughs> in the beginning, he is. In the beginning <laughs> though, I was, so, and, and, this is, and this is one thing and lesson that I had to learn. I was so um, caught up in outside pressure, right? I was so caught up in being, you know, the, the whole stereotype of, oh, the black dad, he's never mm. there. So I was, I was the opposite. I was above and beyond. You know what I mean? I was at every single meeting, every single PTA. You know what I mean? We would, he goes to a private school. So I was that person. Mm -hmm. And it burns you out. Oh, you know I mean? yeah. It burns you out completely. You know what I mean? Because you put your all into your craft, and then you put in your all into your child, and you're putting in, I have a dog, you know, and he acts like a little kid. So I put my all <laughs> into, the, into the dog. You have nothing left for yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So being a father kind of, it taught me, was currently teaching me just to balance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just to balance. You know what I mean? You know when to go all in. You know when, you know what I mean? You know mm -hmm. what you're doing. You know what I mean? So you don't have to prove anything to the outside world. Yep. You know how this uh, the relationship is. You know that he loves you. Mm -hmm. So I don't go as hard anymore. Mm -hmm. And I have that, you know, for my career, but it, it just it just keeps t told me to, to, to create a balance, to have a balance and kind of work with it. You know, balance I'm, is huge. Yeah, I'm a lot more compassionate about you know a five-year-old needs you know what i mean like some stuff is like he falls so you have to hug him and kiss him stuff like that <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm a lot more compassionate i'm not just like oh get up we have to work work you know what I mean? i'm not that person <laughs> <laughs> so it just teaches you that and that carries over in the business yeah yeah that's awesome yeah i trust me i identify with so much of that especially the balance piece i mean i'll, I'll be going 200 miles an hour and then have to have to slow down yeah and I mean, yesterday, the end of my day was on a parent teacher conference, you know, making sure she's up to par with math and exactly. learning what I can do uh, in addition to her schoolwork that mm -hmm. can help her move forward and stuff Facts. like that. 
and then almost immediately pivoting to okay, now I need to work on this deck real quick and you yeah, know, exactly. get these like, financials I'm out. Your deck and I'm also helping him with his sight words and mm-hmm. all this other stuff. So yeah, it's a it's a balance. You kind of learn how to how yeah. to balance the two. Yeah. So I know there's 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 positives and negatives with uh, with everything. Right. Have you seen Have you seen it tilt towards one way or the other, being uh, a father along the way? Or what are some other sacrifices that you've had that you've seen yourself have to make um, on your journey so far? Some of the sacrifices I've made uh, may not seem a lot, but they're huge to me. Like I've missed a parent teacher conference, right? Mm. But his mom is always there. You know mm-hmm. I mean, but I've missed a parent teacher's conference, his very first one. Mm-hmm. That that hurt me to the core, mm. right? So, but keep in mind, I live out here. He lives in Ontario. Mm. Yeah, so he goes to a private school out there. Yeah. So I'm still making that hour commute. You know I mean, trying to be there presently as mm-hmm. often as I can. So that being said, so missing something like that kind of bothered me at first. Mm-hmm. But I, I mean, treat it like the stock market, right? So treat it in a sense where time is always the truth. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like maybe this semester I wasn't the best or I wasn't always present. But over the course of the long term, oh, this will work out perfectly for everybody in the family. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So that's how I'm thinking. I like that. Him watching me go to class and sit there with him in class isn't helping him. Him watching me build a business from scratch. I mean, he's there when I sign contracts. He's there when I'm doing the outlines. I think that helps him a lot more. So I, I don't. Like it's not a short-term game. It's a long-term game. It, oh man, I <laughs> wholeheartedly agree. Um, the the long-term delayed gratification of. Mm-hmm. Uh, your own child, just like your own business, yep. um, your own life, really. I mean, a lot of people they just kind of take it for granted. And exactly. Like, I'm not, I'm not winning right now, you know. But uh, I, I go through it all the time as well, man. Just like trying to figure out, okay, <sighs> she didn't call me this weekend. Uh-huh. Why didn't she call me this weekend? It's fine. She's gonna show up on Monday, yep. bright eyed and bushy tail, happy yep. to see me. Like it's all good. That's how it is. Like my son, when we talk on Facetime, right? Because we Facetime every morning, every night, even if he's over there. Some days he don't want to talk to me. Mm-hmm. Some days mm-hmm. he's watching cartoons, and yo, know, he give me peace, and he hang up on me. <laughs> my feelings are hurt, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not gonna call back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm, not yeah. Call him. I'm like, okay, I, you know, you, you accept that. Yeah, you accept. He chucks the deuce. He's five years old. He's eight years old. He'll need you more. Mm-hmm. I understand that. I mean, so it is what it is. You just give him what he needs at the time. Yeah. And that's the same thing in business. You give him what your business needs at the time. But looking for the future. There's too much truth to that. (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) So um, you said your son's five. Mm -hmm. But you've been in this for far before you even had your son. Right. What are some other things that kind of stuck out that, you know, people should know about? The journey, not just the end goal, because right now someone can look at you and be like, "Oh yeah, man, this guy works for himself. Like he has a cigar rolling academy. It's dope. <laughs> he just got this new spot where he's opening this wine bar." Like, no, no, that's that's <laughs> that, that's not the journey. <laughs> that's, not, that's not how it looks. All he's doing is winning. This is crazy. No, it looks like going from east side of Long Beach. Like, okay, now I'm about to make a big move. Going like the next block over. You know what I mean? Into that mm-hmm. apartment, and then that apartment is filled with inventory. I mean, you have a two bedroom apartment. Well, I had a two bedroom apartment and only thing I had uh, floor space for was the bed. Everything else was everything else was cigars everywhere. Cigar cases, cigar. That's because, an investment. Well, if you're going to go in all in, you have to go all in. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have too much than too less. I mean, I will never leave money on the table. That's how I, that's just how I live. Right. And then cigars, it's not like it's jumbo shrimp. It won't spoil. You know what I mean? So I can I kind of carry it over. You know I mean? So that's how I, that's how that's my thinking. Plus, if I buy this much at this time, it's a lot cheaper than buying smaller quantities. Right, oh, buying bulk. Yeah, and then with me is you know my personality. I trust me. Like I, you know, I can move stuff. I'm pretty yeah. good. I can move. I can, I, move, I can move stuff. I can move stuff. Yeah. So I wasn't too concerned. So, but but just being in that moment, just being in that space, mm-hmm. and I remember, I never felt defeated because I'll never get down to myself. But I just felt like, is it worth it? Hmm. But that's when you have, I mean, but that was just me. I didn't have a partner at the time. I didn't have a woman at the time. I mean, I didn't have any of that. Mm-hmm. It was just me. And, you know, when you have friends group you grew up with, they're not where you are mentally. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you can't bounce ideas off of them because if things go bad, their whole advice is, fuck it, do something else. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't apply to what you're doing. 
So a lot of times, I did shit by myself. Wow. You had to endure that shit. You know yeah. I mean? You just endure it. And you know that you're doing And the reason, and the thing is, just remember why you start doing it. And then you'll never stop. You'll never quit. Mm-hmm. So that's what it is. So it's not easy. <laughs> It was never easy in the beginning. Yeah. It's a little easier now because you got you know you got money to play with. Mm-hmm. But in the beginning, it wasn't easy. But when did you realize you had that money to play with? Or what? How how far? How many years in were you before you were like, okay, I'm well, I'm all right. So take the perse- uh, perspective though. I'm still a well, I was still a senior, you know, app developer mm-hmm. at a Fortune 500 company. So that, I was that, still making. You had that W two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I still yeah. was making you know eighty dollars an hour. So it was one sixty. Which sounds like a lot, but it isn't. It isn't. Not in LA. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, you know, so that goes up quick. You know, with that, tax is thirty five percent at that level. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's a lot. Yeah. And it's a lot by yourself. Yes. But if you're that type of person to endure that kind of stuff, then you can do it. Do you, Do you think a lot of people may not leverage their W twos enough, and they kind of take it for granted, like? You know, I used I used to be that way. I was like, I don't want a W two. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm an entrepreneur. I need to just like sell out and do this and blah blah blah. But as I got older, and salaries started getting higher mm-hmm. and all that stuff, I was like, dang, if I live below my means, I could leverage all this extra Facts. money and put it over here. And oh shoot, oh, I'm doing all right. Facts. And even and even that was just way more intelligent than what I'm about to say. <laughs> I, could, I mean, to be honest with you, I come from hip hop culture, yeah. right? So yeah. most of the stuff I make, most of the moves I make are just culture moves, right? Mm. I knew as a kid, uh, Wu Tang told me dreams cost. Mm-hmm. Dreams ain't free. You have to have a way to pay for them dreams. Yeah. I'm living on the east side. That's not gonna pay for the stuff I have in my head. I have to find a job. After you know what I mean? I went to college, so I have that cushion. But dreams cost money. Yeah. If you don't have a, you know, a sugar daddy or sugar mama, you better work <laughs> until your dreams can kind of, you know, fast forward and do something else. But yeah. no, you need, you need that W-2. You need, yeah. to, you need that leverage. Unless you're a trust fund baby or... Or you have a great network. Yeah. That, that, that's been one of the, the biggest things that stuck out to me. Um, just, this has just been in the last two and a half to three years where I've legitimately, maybe four legitimately been able to leverage my w-2 income live below my means and start building on those different streams of income uh that makes sense that make the most sense for me w-2 is still for me right now is still king yep right until like okay like i'm pitching this company for you know a couple hundred thousand i'm yep. working on this real estate accumulating more real estate um Launching this merchant, like all this stuff. So, but with that though, even well, I'll say tell you this. So with that, you leverage that as well. So think about it. I had the Cigar Roller Academy. Who was my first corporate client? AT and T. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, it's like going to a, all right. That's crazy. It's like like you know me growing up in the hood, right? I'm not gonna go to a Asian uh, liquor store if they don't if they're not nice to me, mm-hmm. right? I'm not mm-hmm. gonna continue working here if y'all ain't go. You know, I'm supporting y'all. Mm-hmm. Support me. Support my business. But you know you don't say it like that. You you give the pitch and all that other great stuff, and people like me. So you know I had that going. <laughs> but the, but <laughs> that being said, that was my first corporate client. Your own employer. Yeah, was my first corporate client. And then from there, it's El Segundo. So then you now oh, you got yeah. Air Force. Now you got Raytheon. Now I got yeah. all these other tech companies. Yeah. But that was my first. And the wow. fact that they put it out there on their website like that, like I was a big deal, is what made these other companies come to me. That's insane. So you're not, you're not only leveraging your salary, you're leveraging your place of business as well. I mean, mm-hmm. you're leveraging everything you have if you think like that, if you want it bad enough. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The only thing I did that other people haven't done is I asked. You see what I'm saying? I'm not afraid. You mean, you tell me no, you tell me no. Yep. <laughs> but I ain't gonna tell myself no. I like that. Yeah, a lot, yeah. Closed mouths don't get fed, right? Or that, yeah. You know, <laughs> so you know, a lot than me, but yeah. yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta ask. Mm-hmm. Um, I, my business partners and and some of the folks I know or folks I keep around me, uh, they know I am never afraid to ask. Like I've met so many people just off LinkedIn, just cold. Just, Facts. hey, you know what? I saw what you're into. I think there's some synergy here. Yep. You want to set up a phone call? Yep. One of them was like, hey, I like what you're into. Do you need financing for that? Yep. Do you want investment for that? I was like, whoa, not right now, but 
That's pretty amazing. Think about it. That was us. That was <laughs> that was us. That, that, yeah. was, that was us. So yeah. that's just how it is. You just have to open. The only thing you did differently was you opened your mouth. Yes. Like you know, like you said, Black LA, where people are actually you know moving and shaking, mm-hmm. extremely small. Yes. So we, if I don't know you, I've seen you in spaces or you know that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But everyone that I've seen that's um, younger than me, don't ask. They all, we all. Ask I wonder about, why that is. Yeah, no, I'll tell you why. So the conversations that I had was, uh, uh, how do I get VC funding or how do we get um, angel investing? You know, just like that, right? Mm-hmm. But no one's ever asked, "Can you fund this?" Hmm. No one's ever asked me that. You did though. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Appreciate I asked that. a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hey, you know what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, you asked me for a certain amount. You didn't even blink. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I like that's something I would do. There's you didn't a. Blink. You didn't do anything. You just looked straight in my eyes and told me how much you needed. I was like, what else can you I was do, like, I right? Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it's and there's a there's a beautiful thing about not coming from money. There's a certain level of tenacity that you right. have, and you won't stop. You won't stop. That right. it'll always be in you, even when you you know reach the point to where you you're like, I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know, but subconsciously you're still like, man, I could I can keep doing this. This is mm-hmm. good. Um, we just got a property over there in Palos Verdes, and my out of pocket was zero. Nice. It was a syndication. I was like, "Hey, I found the deal. I built out the deal, like presented it, pitched it, let them know what the margins would be, what we're expecting, with some, you know, obviously some cushion, uh-huh. and found people to like, hey, we need money for this." We need money for that. We need money for that. This is the timeline. This is the expected return. And they're like, okay, I'll take that pot. I'll take that pot. I'll cover that pot. Exactly. Um, my commitment was time. Exactly. Yep. And the tenacity to get all that shit done. <laughs> the thing is, to other people, it may sound crazy, but like that's just how it is. That's how business is. That's how. In yeah. That's what I've noticed. Yeah. Which is which is wild, and I'm I'm forever learning. But it's it's a very fun ride. Yeah. Right. For all right. I'll take I'll give you this much. I'm opening a wine bar. Yes. I have never had a wine bar. In my life. <laughs> I've never I mean I love wine. I've always loved wine. You know, my mom loved wine, so I grew up, you know, with wine, but I've never ran a bar. I've mm-hmm. never worked in service industry. Mm-hmm. It's just in me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just in me. Yeah, like and, and we were like, Well, where's all this money coming from? That's business. Money, money is everywhere. Money is plentiful. Like that. That's the last thing I worry myself with is the money. Yep. I mean, because I know that's going to be there. It's just the concept. I mean, it's just that we're you know zone entertainment because I'm right by Nelson Reform. So do I carry the concept all the way through? Will it you know I me? Mean, will it carry over to whatever that demographic is in that area? Yeah. That's what I concern myself with. Yep. It's never about the money. It's never even even after this. It's all out there. Yeah. It's, yeah. If you go to uh, was. <laughs> What's kind of blown my mind, and I'll I'll give credit to my realtor, who I met, David Gwilt and his wife Tasha Gwilt. Um, shout out to them because I got back from my deployment, linked up with them uh, before we purchased this uh, multi-family, and he saw the car I pulled up in and was like, "Hey, you're in the cars, you know? I got this exotic. We go on mm-hmm. car runs. Started going to these car meets." And I'm a car enthusiast, but I had never been to a car meet. Mm-hmm. Went to one and just saw beautiful cars, but behind that I saw like a lot of money. Right. I was like, why are there so many damn Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, and Ferraris right. Right. just floating about? Right. You know, and this is like what five miles away. Mm-hmm. Gotta love LA for some for 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 those reasons, but like. The money, and I only say that to say, like, the money is always out there, um, even if you don't come from it. Uh-huh. You know, like, you and I, like, we don't come from money, but we're going to find it. Yeah. It's it's ideas and concepts, mm-hmm. right? So you were exposed to that. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like a saying um, I heard when I was growing up. Once you fly first class, <laughs> right? <laughs> the first time you fly first class, right? And then you fly again. It's real hard to walk past first class if you were the regular class. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Your your mind is already expanded to that, so it's hard to go back to just you know simple to normal shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's and that's that's where I was. You know what I mean once my mind was expanded, mm-hmm. and then for example, last June my wife and I we went to Kenya. 
right? So we went on safari, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, we stayed in Nairobi for a day, but our whole main thing was, you know, on safari. Imagine, and then think about it, we're in a, um, you know, safari truck, no size, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, six of us. Imagine the people that we met there. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Imagine the conversations four hours in the Masamara with a lion serving us. Imagine those conversations. Yeah. You know, imagine the idea exchange. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm learning things from people twice my age, but shit, five times my <laughs> <laughs> five times how much I make. But the thing is, it's just a wealth of knowledge. Yes. And I'm taking that information. And just that alone is what gave me the courage to open this bar. Yeah. You know I mean, just the information I got there. You know I mean, just that energy. Yeah. That alone is what gave me the courage. Because we all have great ideas. We all just don't have courage. Oh, man. But why? I, yeah, I just, I can't grasp, grasp why. Um, Financial. Like, what are you afraid of? Your biggest fear is you running out of money. Or, you're, or yeah. if you're, you know, a lower level person, your biggest fear is people laughing at you. Mm. You see what I'm saying? But mainly in business, your biggest fear is running out of money mm-hmm. or not succeeding, that sort mm-hmm. of thing. You know what I mean? Would you do it? Well, what would you do if you didn't have to worry about the money? <laughs> so That's much. how I operate. <laughs> yeah. That's how I operate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I do it all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's true. I- I've also noticed, um, fiance and I went to a lunch or a brunch and with these folks, and it was at the Waldorf. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, the Waldorf Astoria yeah. in Beverly Hills. My first time there. I've always been around there, but never ate, yeah. ate there, been in that hotel. And um, the way they spoke about money was just different. Mm-hmm. And I started incorporating that like, hey, like, you know, you got to look at money a little different than the way I have been for so long. And since then, it's just been straight abundance. Yeah. You know? Don't, not to cut you off, but don't treat m- the money as the goal. Mm, yeah. That's not what it is. No. I, mean. I treat money, it's the way I think of money, it helps me get to this goal. Yeah, it's a like, tool. So like this, yeah, exactly. Like any other information I get, it helps me get to my goal. Yeah. My focus is the goal. And I just let the universe, I manifest shit. So I just let the universe, <laughs> you know what I mean, fill in from B through Z. Yeah. But my my main focus is just the end goal. Yep. You know what I mean? And then when I focus on that, everything else falls into place. Yep. Yep. 100%. 100%. Um, so we went from kind of where you started. We went through some of the sacrifices that you made. Where? How would you? How would you describe where you are now with... Your entrepreneurial journey, um, no longer at AT and T, no long, you know. Well, it's it's different. So let's let's take a step back, right? So this is a little bit, but even with me, I'm always 100 percent real. That's just me. Everybody <laughs> yeah. just knows me. I'm 100 percent honest with me. So when I was um, like just just going for it, like I was going a thousand miles an hour in my career and everything else. People do that because you you're lacking other areas. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like one thing the hood doesn't have a lot of is love. Hmm. You know what I mean? So growing up, I didn't have a lot of love or something around me. You know what I mean? So with me, I saw people that got love had a lot of money. My only focus was getting a lot of money. Hmm. So, you know what I mean? So when you have that as a kid, and kind of, and then that seed, you know, grows as you grow. That's why I was so focused in my career. That's why I was so focused on being an entrepreneur because I wanted to maximize, you know, the money I made. Like, for example, at at and I would work from seven to five. I'd open up my cigar lounge at five thirty to midnight, every day. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Every yeah. day, because I only yeah. wanted money. But then, you know, I met a woman. You know ah. what I mean? I got married, and you know, and it's it's different now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you you can't you can't grind. I get it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> you know, you get married, and it's and it's it's real love though. It's not like you know what I mean? It's not superficial. It's not right. surface level. Right. You you can feel it. So it changes how you grind. Yeah. It changes your reason for grinding. Yep. You know what I mean? But it doesn't change the grind. You know what I mean? So my grind maybe may may not be as a thousand percent as it was because I didn't care about anything else but this. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, you have my son, I have my wife, you know what I mean? You have your family. So now you're grinding for the legacy. You know what I mean? It, it means more. It's more impactful. So you're not going as fast. Mm-hmm. You're being more strategic with your moves. Yeah. But you're still making those same moves. Wow. So I think presently that's that's where I am. I'm just, I'm more strategic than where I was previous. 
I like that. Yeah, I, I'm constantly learning how to be more strategic uh, for that same reason. And it's uh, about to get married in a few months. Crazy congratulations. Um, it's going to be a big old party. But <laughs> it's just, I just want a big old party. Exactly. <laughs> you know? exactly. And some Macallan 18 and music, good people. We're good. Nice. But um, constantly learning how to be more strategic with, with the grind. Like how to time manage a little bit more. Yep. How to, like tomorrow, tomorrow on my calendar, my fiance can test. It says nothing in all caps. <laughs> oh, that's your time to relax. Nice. That is tomorrow. To, yeah. It says nothing. Okay. We do Granted, you know, I might do some weeding, you know, clean up the house a little bit, but compared to what I, how I normally operate, uh-huh. that nothing is going to be just so much peace. And I'm trying to, trying to get more of that balance incorporated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Especially like being in the military, it's been like yeah, all go, all gas, no breaks, yeah. right? And, and everything is regimented. You know I mean, oh every God. single hour you have to be doing, be productive. You're supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> supposed to be. Um, yeah, man. So that's that's really awesome to hear. Um, what's the timeline on the wine bar? So here's the timeline with the wine bar when you're starting a brand new uh, venture, right? So this is how the city gets you. Mm-hmm. So the first phase, <laughs> yeah, the first thing is city planning. Okay. Right, so I hired a um, architect out. Okay. So he came out, he measured the space, and then he's going to come back with these, um, I guess, the construction documents, right? The blueprints. Yeah, yeah. So Definitely. from the blueprints, I submit the. Um, so we have to do a CUP, so a change uh, conditional use permit. Mm-hmm. So I submit the conditional use permit with the blueprints and all the other stuff to the city, and at the same time, once they approve it, I mean, once they accept the application, then I do mm-hmm. the exact same application for ABC, so the alcohol. Okay. So I get my uh, beer wine license. So that's 30 to 30, 45 days. Okay. From there, once they approve it, we start construction. Because you can't have a beer and wine license with one bathroom. You need two bathrooms. You need male, female bathroom. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we're working. So we have. So once we get oh, the planning phase done. Oh, I get it. That yeah, makes sense. Then you need the um, sense. construction part. So you need that, the second bathroom. I'm going to, just because I'm that type of person, I'm going to run the construction part simultaneously with the decor. You know what I mean? Because you can build it out, but we also could do the flooring. Because we're doing polished concrete. So we also could do the flooring. The bathroom is over here, so it means we could do everything over here. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking to try and get the December crowd at Knott's Bay Farm, so I'm going to open by December. Whoa. Yeah, so I'm I'm. Oh, fast, you're moving. I'm fast-tracking. I'm playing no Dang. games with this. I'm fast-tracking. I'm trying to... If whoever listens to this, please know <laughs> I'm working on a wine list. So if you guys know, I need to get a wine list out. I'm good at what I'm good at. Yeah. I know what I don't know, so I delegate that part. I got a recommendations for you, oh, you on go. that for sure. For yeah, I'm work, sure. I need to work on the wine list and food list. I proposed at a winery, all right? Oh, nice. Yeah, and then we went back to that same place a few months later uh, to do more wine tasting. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so that's... I think we got a wine subscription. Oh, you okay. guys are serious. <laughs> There's a lot of wine and scotch happening yeah, you guys here. Are serious. <laughs> yeah, so for, for me, though, being so close to an amusement park, mm-hmm. I took, so the wine is called um, Wine and Soul, so it's a coffee and wine bar. However, it's not just going to be like a Starbucks. You can just come in, grab coffee, and leave. The lattes that we have will be like, say, for example, like a chocolate cab latte. So it will still have at least wine syrup in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, so everything we have will have wine in it. Ooh. So we want to create that. We don't. I don't want to create an album, you guys, where you guys are chilling, and you got somebody walking in, hanging out at the counter, and then leaving real quick. You know what I mean? I want to create more of a Love Jones vibe, mm. but wine. That's all it is. I like it. It's wine and soul, which means you know, obviously, it won't be hip hop. There'll be soul music there. There'll be live performances. Yeah, chill vibe. But it'll just be chill and dope, and kind of dark atmosphere. Yeah, and just smooth. I like that. All the way through. So if you just needed. Yeah. But it's if you needed. drop the kids off in Knott's Bay Farm, you don't have to hang out under the tree or in the parking lot anymore. <laughs> you can come over to one so and have a good time for like two hours. That's amazing. Yeah. The concept is legit. Um, fits my personality because coffee, wine, chilling. That's my thing though. So in business, right? Go a little deeper. So in business, the one thing you need is to be consistent. Mm-hmm. But also one thing you need is your formula. So whether it be Cigar Roller Academy, whether it be any other business I had prior to even this one, my formula is very simple. It's alcohol, 
<laughs> it's music and it's product. It just so happens in this business, the product is the alcohol. Mm. But if you provide alcohol, music, and product, it will always succeed. That's my formula every single time. You take that into any industry, alcohol, music, product, it works every single time. No lies there. So that's my formula. Everything I've done, alcohol, music, product. I got, I'm going to have to talk to you about uh, some stuff we're working on with uh, revamping the House of Blues in Hollywood. Dope. Yeah. Cause they got rid of the one on Sunset. Yeah, I like a long see, time see, ago, and I was like, idea. "Damn, I love that!" Like, I'm, you can't even like, "Oh, let's do a Seven Eleven." Like, ah, no, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not so much. But, but like also that, bringing back, uh, we want to bring some of the market share of uh, Fight Nights to LA to Hollywood. You just told you know me. You told me that because it's me, right? <laughs> no, you said nope. that because it's me. It's honest. It's honest. Just came up uh, last month. Um, my boy, who's a fight, fighter now. And his boy, who's a fighter now, they're ingrained in that. At first, I was just like, oh, yeah, House of Blues. Like, dang, what happened to that? How can we make it better? Watch this. Right? Watch this, though. All right, so I had a concept for that. Last year, at the start of the pandemic, I was going to do rooftop boxing. Oh, wow. But then that wasn't dope enough for me. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Rooftop boxing would be dope with the DJ and all that other stuff. But that's not the vibe I wanted. Yeah. You know what would have been dope? I wanted to be the very first person to have a full-blown boxing match, like four-card boxing match, inside the club. Ooh. In the club. I want the people coming to the ring, I want the DJ to bring them out. We're gonna have to talk. I want them bottle girls with the things to bring them out. Have to that talk. was my concept. We're gonna have to talk. Yeah, so that's why I was like, you must have said that because bottle you see that was at the fight. <laughs> bottle service. Yeah, the bottle service, yeah. That's who brings you to the ring. Yeah. You know how dope that would be? Mm -hmm. With the DJ sound system? You know what I mean? And then in between fights, you have the, you know, Tour contest, I don't know, but you know, it's whatever. <laughs> yeah, they're drinking, you know, it is what it is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you yeah. just keep the entertainment value going. But yeah, that yeah. was my concept, that's awesome, man. yeah. I, I, I like that. I want to find out so we know, like, you're, you're building the wine bar that's projected for December. I do wish you the best with that because, uh, man, I just submitted permits for, for a foundation repair. And that that Pulling took permits? months, and I was Man. like, "God dang!" <laughs> but whew, um, that was just today. But um, past that, where do you see? So you know, a lot of people talk about find your why, find your why. What's your why? Um, I like to talk to people about what their Z is, kind of like what what's the end for you? What what do you see as the end for you? And the end can't mean you know it doesn't have to mean like I retire, but uh, your Z could be yeah. like I'm good. I'm hanging. For me, it's, it's still the same thing. It's, um, it's something you spoke about earlier. My wife and I, we've always talked about black excellence, right? Mm -hmm. And for us, the black excellence is, is simply this. We want to create, and I remember Jay-Z said this in the song, people thought it was funny. We want to create a society within a society. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? That means whatever industry it is, we want to take the brightest and best minds. You see what I'm saying? And, put them, and once a month, let's have a brunch. There's no agenda. There's no, I mean, there's nothing to talk about. It's just when you have the brightest and best minds together, you guys could talk about grass or whatever it is. And it just, and you know what I'm saying? And it, just, and it just grows. It just goes because iron sharp is iron. Yeah. That only, it, uh, it doesn't happen when it's when you bring other people in and they kind of, you know, they, they change the energy or they, you know, it just, they don't add on. Mm -hmm. They don't add value to the conversation. Yeah. We want to create, I want to be at the level of success where people would see me and it's like, okay, I want to hear what he has to say. That's 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 my Z. You know what I mean? Because I I say things, I'm a lot different than what, you know, these people on Instagram, you know, they have these best words and all this other shit. <laughs> that's not me. I'm real. And give them from the hood. So I knew what it takes to get from where I am, from there to where I am right now, mm -hmm. and then from where I am right now to where I need to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then the biggest part of that is not financially. It's the type of person you have to be back then. Yeah. To the type of person you have to be right now. And then from there, the type of person you have to be to be at this level. I mean, your personality has to change. Everything can't be fucked up. I mean, you, you have to change the way you speak. You have to change how you relate to people. I mean, so I'm, under, I'm enjoying that, that uh, progress. But my Z is, that's what we want. We okay. want to be able to create that Black Excellence Brunch monthly. Damn, we're really going to have to talk. Yeah, in a house in PV. We want to, uh, oh, our end state is uh, building... We just started our dream board, uh, restarted our dream board, is building a property in, in, over in that area, how we want it. 
and uh, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, hey, these are the cars I want. We're gonna be seventy five percent there mm-hmm. next month. This is the house. This, you know, so it's all, you know. Yeah. I, I love your Z, man. Like, that's my, that's huge. And my thing is, I don't want this at 70. I mean, it did not, it took, it, it took God five, six, seven days to create this shit. So why did it take me forever? You know what I mean? Like, people pray, like, oh, can you get out of debt in six years? Like, wow, you created the world in five days. Yeah. No, I want I want this. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I, don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I'll give it, so I'm 46. Well, I'll be 46 on my birthday. This is before 50. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is before fifty. This isn't like oh, we're moving in the future. Like yeah. oh, some cr- no, this is happening. I got an eight year timeline. Yeah. I, and we, the lady and I were talking yet last night about timelines, and I was like, we need a timeline, but we don't need a timeline. Yep. And you know, we want to stick to every time we write something down. You know, it comes to fruition. Like mm-hmm. we subconsciously we're just working on it, day in day out, and we've hit everything that we've said not even looking at it we haven't even we, we mm-hmm. don't even like revisit what we wrote it down yep. on and i'll share i'll share that like it's it was just on a little coffee what do you call those things the little coffee holders the little heat things yeah i know what you're talking about yeah yeah we just wrote it on there one time in a coffee shop a couple years down the road this is what we and we hit almost everything buy a house mm-hmm. me me going to deployment come back her finish her master's get engaged, all that stuff. And uh, the writing it down, and it's almost like we were projecting our our Z every time. Yep. But our Z keeps growing, yep. right? Um, but and, yeah, man, like... I, the way we, I put that is, you know, it's manifesting all other stuff, right? Oh, of course. But essentially, you're asking for God for big shit. <laughs> I mean, don't be ashamed to ask God for big shit. That's what it is. People <laughs> are like, oh, can you do this? Can you do? Can you pay my rent next month? Fuck that. Can you buy me five houses? You know what I mean? I want big shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how I think. Yeah. That's just where I am. And and I operate in the universe, you know, whatever I put out there, the universe helps me get to there, get mm-hmm. there. Because I think like that. I'm not gonna, I mean, it's like your credit card. You ain't gonna use a credit card at rallies. You're gonna use a credit card for furniture purchases. Yeah. You know, for big shit. Yeah. I'm gonna wait for God to give me big shit. That's just yeah. how, that's just how I think. <laughs> it sounds fun it sounds real you know but that's just me that's and awesome been, and this is worse for me well hey we definitely got to connect um after this and i know we just reconnected after a very long long hiatus i was gone you were crushing life <laughs> um but yeah man uh i, I just want to close out by having you kind of tell everyone where they could find you how they can get into the Cigar Rolling Academy uh, whenever the next one is. And, and oh, right. then, yeah, like, <laughs> right. yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, COVID. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just kind of, like, let them know what's up. All right, so perfect. So you can, um, if you want to follow me or anything like that, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Cigar Roller Academy, just as it's spelled, Cigar Roller Academy. Single, not rollers, just single roller. Um, and it's simple. If you want to sign up for a Cigar Rolling class, well, keep in mind. A little bit about the Cigar Rolling Academy. <laughs> Keep this <laughs> yeah. Keep in mind, a little bit about Cigar Rolling Academy. We're the first and only in the country. We've been doing this for over five years, and no one's able to duplicate what we do yet. You will roll three cigars each. You will roll three cigars within 90 minutes. Your first cigar is your first time, so they'll be a little bit, you know, a little bit suspect. Second, third will guarantee to be a perfect cigar because your teacher's great. Ooh. That being said, we will hold classes Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays are at 6 p.m. The Saturday class is at 7 p.m. If you want to sign up, just go to our Instagram or go to our Facebook page, Cigar Roller Academy. Send me a DM. I'll put you on the list. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you again, man. Like it's like I said, I hold you in very high regard just from entertaining what me and my boys had to offer, uh, what we had to pitch at that time uh, years ago. And... I know you asked me before we even started this, like, hey, you know, when, when was my response taken as, um, like, how did you take it? Did you take it negatively? Did you take it positively? Like, what, how'd you react? Uh, ever since then, that was essentially our first real pitch, and I would say to a angel investor, right? Ever since then, I, I've gotten better and better and better at refining how I present myself, um, 
who I incorporate into the to the evaluation process and like, hey, I need you to take a look at this before I approach someone and all that stuff, just so I make sure I'm refined. Because uh, time is money, and it's the only thing we can't get back. Facts. Right? Um, Facts. But yeah, man, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening. Chris is amazing. Um, I need to go into the Cigar Rolling Academy because I don't know how to roll them. I got some over there, but I'm sure they're just kind of <laughs> I'm sure it's kind of mediocre um, but yeah t- thank you for tuning in uh, we'll see you guys next week if you have any questions feel free to hit me up and uh, yeah thanks for joining the 83k way peace thank you so much for listening new episodes for the 83k dropping every Friday and I can't wait to hear what you think cheers <laughs>